Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I would like to continue uh, exemplifying um, derivatives uh, for certain basic functions. And uh, today's function, which we will consider, is logarithm. Um, well, this lecture is part of the um, course of advanced mathematics for uh, teenagers. It's presented uh, on unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from this website because every lecture contains uh, on this website contains some notes uh, which are very useful like a textbook basically plus registered students can take exams for instance and participate in other purely procedural educational uh, steps all right so derivative of the logarithm well first of all i would like to consider natural logarithm so you remember that function natural logarithm uh, of uh, x. It's basically logarithm based with a number e, which is approximately 2.71, but this is the fundamental constant of calculus. We talked about this uh, number e um, in particular as uh, uh, if you remember if you have some kind of an exponential function e to the power of x, then whenever this particular tangential line at x is equal to 0 is at 45 degrees, if a is equal to some number e, 2.71, blah, blah, it's irrational number. Um, another, there is an amazing limit <coughs> which we were considering before, 1 plus x to the power 1 over x goes to number e as x tends to 0. That's another definition of e. They're all equivalent to each other. Um, well, remember this one, actually. We will be using it in this lecture. So let me just wipe out this picture and go to... Well, actually, I put it somewhere else and go to the calculation of the the calculation of the derivative of natural logarithm of x. So, let's just go to the definition, right? What's the definition of the uh, derivative? It's function increment divided by argument of uh, uh, increment of the argument as limit of delta x as increment goes to zero at any particular point x. x is a fixed number which is part of the domain for the function f at x. So in this particular case we are talking about uh, limit of delta x goes to zero of logarithm x plus delta x minus uh, logarithm natural natural logarithm of x well I don't really need this bracket I can put it here divided by delta x right so this is basically a definition where x belongs to uh, domain of the logarithm, which is positive numbers, obviously. Um, and delta x is some uh, increment, which is an infinite, infinitesimal um, variable. x is fixed, delta x is an in infinitesimal variable. Well, now, uh, to calculate this, we have to like make some transformations, right? Obvious transformation. Um, you remember that the difference between logarithm uh, of the same base is basically a logarithm of the ratio, right? Remember this? Logarithm B, um, let's say U divided by V is equal to logarithm U minus logarithm V. Well, this is just an elementary formula of logarithm, right? So the difference between logarithms we can replace with 
logarithm of their ratio. Divided by delta x, right? Well, delta x tends to zero. All right, equals. Now, I can obviously divide this to get logarithm of 1 plus delta x divided by x and delta x here, right? That's the same thing. Divided x by x is 1, delta x is delta x over x. Now, here is an interesting story. Let's do it this way. I will divide by x and multiply by x. x is a positive number, so basically nothing is changed here. And now, consider this and this. Well, x, as I was saying before, is a fixed number within the domain of the logarithm, and delta x is infinitesimal. So basically, delta x divided by x is just an infinitesimal, and it goes to zero as well. So it's logarithm of 1 plus I will use delta divided by delta times x, right? Where, um, well, I have to put the limit here. Delta goes to zero, right? Now, let's go back to our amazing limit. Remember this? Now, if this goes to this, then if I will apply logarithm to both sides, logarithm is a, a continuous function, so basically if this goes to this, then logarithm of this goes to logarithm of this, because logarithm is a continuous function. And what does it mean? Well, let me put it here. Um, natural logarithm of 1 plus x to the power 1x goes to natural logarithm of e, right? As x goes to 0. Now, this is an exponent, and I know how logarithm is working with exponent. You have to factor it out. So it's 1 over x logarithm 1 plus x. Now, what is natural logarithm of e? Well, obviously it's 1, because this is the power which you have to raise the base, which is e, to get e, which is 1. So we have this particular limit as an immediate consequence of this amazing limit, which I was discussing in one of the previous lectures, right? Now, what's the difference between this and this? Well, there's only one difference. Well, this x is infinitesimal, right? So don't confuse this x with, it, with this x. I was just using the letter x in my amazing limits thing, so that's why I continue. I can as well put delta here. This is a variable. It's not a constant. So let me put delta here, and it would be more looking more like whatever I have. Here, x is basically a constant, and delta is infinitesimal, and delta is infinitesimal here. So the difference is only this. And this is the constant, which means I have actually, uh, I have to put it outside of the limit, since it's a constant. So what's remaining? Well, remaining, this logarithm 1 plus delta divided by delta as delta goes to 0, which is 1. So the only thing which is remaining is 1 over x. And this is the derivative of natural logarithm. So f derivative of x in this case is equal to 1 over x. Well, just before I go any further, let me tell you that personally I felt it a little bit strange, this particular result. Because this is x to the power of something. In this case, it's x to the power of minus 1. Now, we know that x to the power of n 
derivative is equal to n times x to the power of n minus 1, right? And this is not only for n integer, actually it's for any n, and uh, including negative, by the way. So that's why I was kind of surprised to see that x to the power of minus 1 is the result of this particular derivative because it looks like it belongs to a completely different uh, class of functions, the class of uh, uh, functions which, which have s s something in, in the power, like x to the power of something. So this looks like one of these, but at the same time, well, again, that's the basically the surprise which I had. Uh, I did not expect to have this particular result for for logarithm. Well, th that's what it is. I mean, I, I can't say anything more than that. It's a little bit surprising the first time when I saw it, but that's basically it. All right, so let me just continue this and go to logarithm with uh, any other base. So let's say you have g of x equals to log of x with a uh, base b, which is any uh, positive uh, number b as a base. So what is the derivative? Well, it's actually easy because logarithm x is equal to logarithm x with a base, any other base. So there is a formula basically which transforms logarithm by with, with one base to logarithm with another base. And this formula was uh, in detail considered when I was talking about logarithms. I do suggest you, if you don't remember it, to refer to that particular lecture. So, and this is natural logarithm x divided by natural logarithm b. Which means that is equal to um, logarithm x divided by logarithm b derivative. And this is a constant, obviously. So this is 1 over x times logarithm b. So the derivative of natural logarithm of x is 1 over x. And this is just a constant multiplier. I retain it in the denominator. Well, that's it. It's a short lecture, which is kind of very easy. But I was just trying to exemplify a particular function. So we were considering different examples. We were considering power function, exponential function, logarithmic function. There is another lecture, which is trigono trigon trigonometry, trigonometric functions. Um, so these are um, basic functions from which, well, any kind of a algebraic or calculus problems actually consist of. And to take the derivative, you just probably have to combine different properties of the derivatives, which we are addressing in a different lecture, with derivatives of elementary functions, which I have exemplified in these few lectures. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>